Hi everyone, the following video is a recording of our 58th Artist Feedback AMA session. The session was held in the Meta Jungle Discord on December 22nd and hosted by the talented Mike Schmidt and Steve Bennett. We want to thank Mike and Steve for taking the time and reviewing five different NFT collections and editions featuring all different types of NFT photography. We also want to thank everyone that submitted their work for review and everyone that was able to attend. We hope you find this session as useful as we did. And with that, let's go on ahead and get into it. Um, you should be able to see on my screen, it says uh, uh, Hibernal. That's the first collection that we're gonna be looking at. I noticed that uh, So Spicy is in here and his name is Steve uh, Nunez. Nunez. And um, he says, um, it's the first, his first minted collection. Um, what what does licensing mean exactly or like the importance of licensing and is the work fairly priced we'll get to that um but um let's first take a look so um we have uh i, I first usually look at the banner on um foundation is an interesting place because they give you a nice big piece to put a nice banner piece and um you put a little uh your little opening image here and um Banner, banner piece looks pretty good. I mean, at least compositionally, it's 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 in place. I see a lot of banners where the image is cut off and stuff. Um, you might add something with a little more pop than this. Um, also, you know, uh, uh, hibernal. I I probably would capitalize that. I don't think you need a period at the end of it because it's the title. So, like, just little things like that to make it look a bit more um, a bit more clean. So there's um, uh, there's five images here, and we'll read the description. So, drawing inspiration from a name synonymous with the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, and sharing the same linguistic root as hibernation, hibernal, is a collection that I hope will highlight the importance of shelter to protect us from the violent whims of winter weather. A portion of proceeds will be donated to local nonprofit or organizations combating hope, uh, homelessness. And that makes sense because the collection is about being out in the cold, and that's definitely the hardest time of the year for the homeless to be out there. So I like the um, I like the artist statement. It doesn't give away too much about the collection. It just kind of gives us that that feeling and that mood about what that collection is going to be about. So let's take a look at uh, some of the NFTs here in the collection. There's um, um, there's five here. There's actually three that really stand out to me the most, and I think I'm I'm, I'm going to open those ones up. Um, there's uh, there's hot toddy, which is what is a hot toddy? I've heard that before. Do you know what that means, Steve? Does anyone know what a hot toddy is? Hi, sorry. Yeah, it's a uh, you know it's a warm alcoholic beverage. Oh, is it nice? So, um, very cool. Uh, let's go into the description first. I stumbled across this cozy scene on a winter drive through rural Connecticut and had to pull over to snap a frame, named after the warm whiskey. Well, I guess if I read this right here, I, I no named after the warm whiskey. Honey, lemon, and cinnamon spirit that I imagined uh, the occupants were sipping on under a comfy blanket in front of a nice warm fire. Hot toddy is a, is another one of my favorite winter photos. Uh, like all the NFTs in the Hibernal collection, hot toddy is a reminder of the importance of shelter to protect us from the violent whims of uh, of winter weather. So, um, so yeah, this shot. Thinks really, I, I thought it's really, really beautiful. It has, um, it has a lot of great elements happening. You know, there's, we got snow. Um, you know, you have foreground with this tree trunk here, um, and these trees on the on the side here, and then it leads into the, this, um, you know, this wintry home cabin, whatever you'd like to call it. And you know, it's a really, really great touch that some of these 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 ambient lights are on inside the home. That adds a lot of flavor to the image because the image is mostly uh, bluish cold. 
um, of, of, a, of a feel. And then you got the warm tones of the uh, windows, the warm tones of the uh, fireplace, the brick fireplace, and then a little smoke coming out. So um, I thought this image was really, felt really, really nostalgic. It, it reminds me of um, snowy Christmas time or snowy times upstate or in Pennsylvania with family members where everybody's in the house warm and gathered and being festive and such. Um, yeah, technically, I think it's a really well presented uh, image. Sometimes I look at whites, like whites in certain areas, and if they're if they're blue, I I think about color temperature a bit, and whether or not I would um, I would tone down the blues just in certain areas of the, this photo to to make those whites pop, and then maybe um, there's a there's a whites. Uh, and a blacks tab in Lightroom where maybe you could punch the whites just a little bit to make that snow jump and pop. But I'm not sure, uh, Steve, how do you, I mean, I guess, I guess blue, part, partly blue makes this image pretty nice too, though, because it has that, that warm, uh, with the, with the cold, cold tones, but how, from a, from an editing point of view, um, is it is it too blue or gray in some areas? Would you make the white pop more? How, how would you go about this technically? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really interesting photo. And I mean, normally I don't like things centered, but this really works very well here because of the uh, the run up to the, the house there and your eye is swept in. I like uh, how the snow is carrying my eye along. So I'm good with the center there. Um, What's bothering me a little bit is the, um, I don't know, is it a temperature issue of the snow? We have the green trees, and at first I looked at it and I thought, well, is this doing selective color, which I'm not a fan of at all. I said, no, it's not. Um, so I would agree with Mike if there was something to uh, punch up the snow, either by selectively bringing up the highlights in those areas or changing the uh the white point on that see it's interesting if you look at the clouds in the sky they're uh, white yeah those are definitely white and um and the, and the snow on the roof too on the uh, our our right house is left it's white so i wonder if uh you know noodling with that and the snow in the foreground would uh um you know, would enhance the picture. I mean, I, I think it's a compelling picture, as is, um, and it's after the fact since it's minted, but you might just try noodling around with that and see if if that helps, because I do think it's, it's a little bit out of joint with the other color in there, but good composition. I agree, and I think it's just a global adjustment of actually just kind of pulling up whites a little bit in Lightroom and just seeing some of the pop in the white or maybe even a possible local adjustment where you kind of leave the house alone and you just kind of um, kind of paint in some of these areas by bringing down the blues of it and bringing up the highlights or something. Mm -hmm. I know there's something that you, you can you can certainly do, but it'll 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 give punch to this this image and it'll feel it'll feel more snowy. You know, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do a global adjustment because those clouds are and the white roof are going to get completely blown out. So okay. I think um, you just want to be careful when you do that. But um, it certainly does convey the mood that you want. It's got the vibe. And uh, oh, I just noticed the, the red brick. I mean, oh, I like this. Me too. I like this image a lot. I wanted to make stuff. one comment when you were talking about the statement and uh, if you can go back to the overall statement here. Sure, let's do that. This um, is just a, uh, a couple things. One, a pet peeve of mine is uh, I really suggest that people remove words like hope, believe, want. I mean, it's a collection that highlights. Are you hoping it highlights? I mean, if you feel strongly about the work, then you know, drop what I call apologetic uh, words, which are unnecessary. I think that uh, it, you know, I mean, to realize, you know, you're you're being polite here, but um, think about how it might work without that word. And when you talk about your work, in terms of the banner, um, I, I, I would uh, 
suggests something else here that you can easily change. My problem here is, I, I don't know, there's going to be some macro photographs of snowflakes. Um, and it's so pixelated that I'm not sure what I'm doing. If you go to your images now. There's probably about, one in here like that fits better like this. Like the one we were talking about almost even, right? Yeah, even a slice of it because you're not going to get the whole thing in because the aspect ratio of the foundation banner. But look at the first one where it's got the two houses. You could just do a slice of those. Uh, I, I, I don't think on, on Wii would work because, um, uh, you know, you got to stretch it out and you're not going to know what it is. But I think that um, use something that tells us, you know, what's going on here at a glance, I think would be uh, interesting. Or, or even the one that we just did, where if you got the second floor. Yeah, I think and, this one. Yeah, I think this one, like just the, the, the centered part of it here could be like, let's see if you kind of went with, um, you know, something like something like that for a banner could be. Uh, yeah. Or maybe you know could be really compelling, bring you into the the um, the collection. Well, I think it also reinforces the idea that this is about those of us who are lucky enough to have shelter. That this is cozy, this is warm. So, you know, just just a thought. But I, I think either of those would be stronger than uh, what you have now, and I think that would help you too. I love this clothes from season reason freezing. That's fantastic. Me, I love me that. too. Yeah, Me too. Work. Wouldn't work as a banner, though. It's uh, I think no. that, you know it'd be monstrously huge. Before we go to that, though, but I agree with the, what you were saying here. So if if it said like, um, you know, Hibernal is a collection that highlights the importance of shelter to protect us. The I hope thing is like I agree. It's just not needed at all, and it gives us a sense of confidence from you that. Um, not just a sense of confidence from you, but it makes me believe that that's what it's about, you know, rather than um, I hope, you know, so I, I told I, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, and I try to stay away from um, I wish I hope uh, rather than those things, you know, talk about the things that, um, that 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 you believe strongly are, or, you know, even about your future, right, to say that when they say, um, I hope I'm going to, I hope I'm going to do this versus I am going to do this. It's like, you're, you're, you're training yourself to already have an option to exit, um, rather than training yourself to, um, to, to implement and to manifest. So I just think that's in general in life in general, it's just better to, to stick to things, um, um, that are, that are that are strict in, in, in what you what you would want to achieve, rather than, than being hopeful for achieving. That. It makes sense. psychologically. I think it makes sense. So, let's open up cold for the se uh, season. Reason freezing. Cause I really like this shot too. Beautiful nostalgic uh, photograph, right? Um, He's, it's, it's, so I, you know, I read the description. It's, um, it says it's the homeless man standing outside of this, uh, which seems to be like a flea market on Sundays, indoor and outdoor, rain or shine, it says, but um, rain or shine, but obviously not snow <laughs> because it's closed for the season and the reason is uh, freezing. Um, beautiful shot. One, one thing I, 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 pro I probably would have stepped back about a foot maybe a foot and a half, um, gave a little more breathing room for the bottom of the frame to not cut off the feet, um, yeah, to have this, this pole on the left side in the frame a bit more to just open it up to feel like a bit more of a movie scene, uh, feel a bit less like it's um, kind of compressed and, and claustrophobic. Um, I know you said you like this image, Steve, you like to talk about it. Uh, yeah, and I have exactly the same thoughts here, that stepping back a little bit. I mean, you know, the structure is really unusual, so I could see where the tendency would be to want to focus on it. But it is a, a little bit uh, disturbing, missing the feet and that left side of the pole. The pole is kind of goofy because it probably was actually bending over, but we're not sure why it just kind of like is arcing into the frame here. Um, other thing is... Well, two things. One is the color. 
I mean, I'm almost seeing some purple on the uh, the frames. Are those wooden? That's probably wood. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm seeing like some purple fringing on like some of the yeah. brick parts here, right? And um, I th this top part's wood. The, the middle parts are wood, and then there's, there's there's brick laying on the outside, and then the purple part here it might be uh, an, another. It might yeah, be wood as well. Is that the actual color? If it's the actual color, great. But if that is some kind of a, uh, a color artifact here, you might want to do something about it. It's not, um, I don't think that it's uh, an issue. I'm just curious as to what that was. And then lastly, um, I'm wondering about, um, because of the angle, What I don't know what lens this was shot with, okay? This thing is slightly warped. And what I'm wondering is, uh, you know, in Photoshop, that would be two clicks to actually automatically correct the X, Y axis. And it would be more squared up. I guess that's the word. And mm -hmm. yet it doesn't bother me, but I'd be curious to know what this thing would look like squared up. But I think that in terms of conveying the sense of this person being on the outside, and this <laughs> closed for season, reason for reason, uh, it definitely drives the point home. So I think it's, I think it's a good documentary piece. I do too. And I think a good way, well, at least for me to think about color temperature and if things are accurate, is I usually, if I see purples here, I usually go right to skin tone in the face. And so in the face, I actually can see sort of a plumish, purplish uh, skin tone color. So um maybe maybe the magenta is just a, a bit uh, punched here um in the direction of magenta um and what is it on the scale it's either magenta or green right and so even if you didn't want to bring the temperature towards green something that i tend to do in in, in light room is that i'll i'll just go to the color magenta or red alone and i'll play around with the hue i'll play around with the saturation and just that not to not to add more green to the image if, if if green is not you know wanted to be added to the image so that's something um that's something you can work on doing but i definitely you know with all that being said you know we we we're we're always ultra technical just because you know we're trying to be as helpful as possible this is a you know a, feedback AMA and um but outside of that I love I love this photograph it, um really it's a really great scene I'd love to have, have been there to capture it myself so very cool between this photo and the last photo that we looked at um I think um they fit really well in this collection what this collection is about um move on to another snowy picture here um and this one is reserved that actually see the prices are very confusing here though I mean it's you go from 0 0.04 on um, for reason freezing close for the season um, to 0 0.05 and then to one ETH. Um, whereas I, I'm not, I mean, I like this image. I do, but I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I like it as much uh, as to spend. Um, how much more is that actually? If it's zero point zero four four eight, that's actually, yeah. Actually, zero point uh, oh two five is where it starts. So it starts off at uh, so, the yeah. So first one, and the progression goes up to point two five to four to five to one. yeah. But zero zero point zero two five, even even that ten times over. Yeah. is still 0 0.25 right so 10 so this is 40 times more than this is my math off well, it's 25 bucks versus a thousand bucks 1200 bucks roughly so yeah so the price jump here is very confusing i mean especially for me not even on these pieces but actually on these ones because i consider these to be some of the strongest in the collection i actually consider the first two to be um, weaker images in the collection and by um, by the pricing being so much lower than even zero point, no, not so much lower than these, but so much lower than this, um, that the artist believes that these were the weaker ones as well. So like, let's let's take a look at the one for, for, for one. So um, 
it is it is a beautiful shot. There's a lot of snow happening. Um, it does have a nice composition. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure on this shot if I would have stepped back. I think maybe this is a perfect place to take the image. Um, it's 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 a beautiful image. It's it's got the nostalgia factor. Um, it doesn't have the human element that um, that closed for season has, which really brought a new element of like story and life to the image for me, which is why I'm kind of um, kind of confused as to how how big the difference in price is. Um, we're jumping, um, you know, one. Uh, we're jumping two decimals here uh, on the price, um, but. I, I I do I do enjoy the image I I, I like it a lot um, but then we'll go to, let's go to you know go to some of the image the first two images which is which are the images that I um, feel are the least successful it, and, and especially the second image because it just it 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 really feel, feels out of place click on the second image and we're looking through. Um, we're looking through an obviously an indoor space um, that's you know very dark down, and we're looking out into um, you know a home that's just across like a neighboring home with you know yellow um, yellow um, yellow uh, what is it not tile walling or however you say it um, and and you know some windows and a little bit of frost on the window a little bit of snow underneath. Um, it just, it, it, it definitely, this shot for me lacks, um, not that every shot really has to have a, a story, but it feels like it's, it's missing something. I do, I do like the idea of creating a frame within a frame. I'm not sure I like the idea that this part of the window intersects through like exactly this area, like maybe if it intersected a bit higher. And we had a subject in the window here, then I could I would say you know this this feels like a real story or it feels like a piece that really stands out to me. I'd love to see more of the roof here because this roof uh, looks like it has the wind. It feels like it's very windy and the wind's blowing off this portions of this snow. I'd love to see a little bit more of the roof. That would bring this part higher up. I think the composition could have been better and. You know, it would be really nice if there was a subject in the window there. I know it's probably a waiting game, but um, I, do you find that this piece to be the least successful within this collection, um, Steve, or you have an opposite opinion of me? Um, I actually I'm intrigued by it. Uh, I think that it's maybe part of another collection. I'm not sure, but um, it is quite out of character with the others in terms of um, the, both the scale and the compositionally, it's quite different from the others, which are all exterior and uh, which isn't to say that you can't have interior, but um, there's something about it that the, the window is so big and it is, the, it is the image there that I think it's a little bit out of place in this collection. Um, that said, I like some of the tension here, uh, as much as that uh, top of the windowsill uh, does, in fact, bisect the uh, window. On the other hand, I do like the fact that it's a straight line and in juxtaposition to the curving snow down below. And I think that's a pleasing tension. Um, I like the yellow of the house versus the Kind of brownish back black around there too. I think that that contrast is good tension there. So, um, and the swirling snow. It. Um, I think this is a really interesting photo. I'm just not quite sure that it. Uh, it fits with the collection. It certainly fits with the hibernal concept. You're inside, and there's this, you know, all the stuff in the environment that's nasty going on outside. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, I actually think this is an interesting photo. So. You did you you did make it grow on me a little there with yeah. some of what you said. So I do like the, um, the contrasting thoughts uh, from you because it's it does have a nice tension with this uh, with this rounded snow uh, and the straight line here and, um, and the color contrast between the yellow out there and and this dark interior. 
um, does kind of set a feeling and a mood uh, for the for the for the viewer, which is us who is in some regard inside this inside the home as the viewer. So I also like a little bit of uh, I don't know what that is on the right. Uh, go above the window. It's a line that goes up. Keep going on the right, all the way to the right. Yeah, go straight up all the way. Keep going up, 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 up. I don't know what that is, but I like it because it's it's breaking up the space in an unusual way. So I don't know whether that is. I think it might be light coming in from uh, the side of the side of the there. blinds, but I don't know how it goes straight down like that. Huh. But I, I do like that element there because it, it introduces an element of surprise. And I think that the more you look at this picture, the more interesting it gets. Actually, it'll grow on you, Mike. It's actually you're yeah, you're right. It is. <laughs> this is more you're pointing out like these little abstract things. Um, it is it is certainly starting to grow on me so that is why i like to have a co-host <laughs> very much um that are that could articulate art uh, in a way that you can so um there's one image we didn't look at yet and that's um is is that galidity is that how you say that galidity <clears throat> so another snowy drive through rural connecticut another peaceful winter scene uh galidity meaning the quality or condition of being extremely cold or icy uh, perfectly captures the uh, essence of the moment. I really love the still scene and the bluish green hue of the icy pond in front of the cozy cabin uh, that looks like it was uh, designed uh, for the winter evergreen trees and the forest behind it. Like all the photos in the Hibernal collection, uh, Gilidity reminds us of the importance of shelter to protect us uh, from the violent whims of, uh, of winter weather. So it seems as though like this is this is a new part of the description and this is a, a pasted part from the other one. And that's fine with me. Um, I like how you're describing it here um, and, and how you feel about it, how you love it, what you love about it. It gives a, a personal element to it. Let's take a look at the um, Take a look at the uh, the actual the actual photograph here. Um, you know, I I I find it to be pleasing in the regards that like, in the sense of like I I love all the snowfall that's happening. I love the frozen over lake. I feel like the uh, the temperature the artist got right uh, in this image more than some some of the other images. Like these these whites seem more of a purish white to me. Um, I, I enjoy that aspect of it. Um, there's something about the the background holding a lot of weight in this image, um, whereas with landscapes, you know, like um, I do like I do like the weight to kind of be distributed in some way of you know foreground, uh, middle ground, background. With the background is 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 heavy in weight here. Um, the foreground is is blurred out in some in, in some regard due to I, I you know I assume the um, a kind of a shallower uh, depth of field which I don't know is exactly needed when you have this much um, light you could probably have had the detail of this in there and that's subjective as to whether or not we want that detail but um, you know foreground's lacking a bit for me. I don't think really leads me into the uh, the background. The midground um, is weighted a, a bit, you know, heavily on the left side, um, which also has um, the larger uh, the larger um, log cabin is over here too. So it's just like there's a lot of weight um, in this side of the frame. Sometimes when I take a photograph, I think to myself, you know, if I was a painter, would I paint it this way? Um, this piece, this, um, this, it looks like a table that's just kind of consumed in snow, uh, is just in a place that's, that's just, um, almost distracting for me rather than an element that's intriguing. If it was like, um, if it was like an anchored boat here with some color, like a yellow anchored boat, um, with some snow in it, I think that would do it more for me than you know it just seems like um you know it's, it's kind of a big blob of um of, of snow and wood it's kind of hard to tell what it uh, what it actually is so that would be my you know my general um you know like overview of this photo for me 
it wouldn't be the one that I'd collect within the collection. And Steve, if you have anything to add to this, or if you just, you know, you've. I think you summed it up well. I don't think it's the strongest one. And um, um, so, yeah, I think that the, uh, I'm not sure the blurring at the top, it looks like maybe that was done in post mm -hmm. um, up there and maybe the foreground. I'm not quite sure yeah. about that, but um I think the detail and the structures is very good. And, um, the uh, when you get to the other bank, or rather from that uh, platform, that's maybe it's part of a dock or something that's in the water there. From there up to the top of the roofs, it's pretty consistent. And I, I like the the whites; they're not overpowering. There, the highlights aren't blown. That's good. Um, the uh, Again, the, uh, the, the the trees at the top, I have a question mark. And now part of it is your screen sharing. So part of it's so my, your my screen, screen sharing. Uh, I'm going to take that back. I apologize if you actually look at it on foundation. That modeling there is, now those things are razor sharp. My apologies. It's Mike, it's your screen sharing. I think it's Discord. So um, no, never mind that. I think that when we get from the banks on up, it's nice and uh nice and crisp but i'm always wondering is if it was cropped um you know just under that structure in there so that might be kind of interesting and i find the foreground to be uh, somewhat distracting it doesn't take me anywhere there aren't any leading lines there's nothing to pull me into it so just a thought yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to take a look at the image here. I mean, for me, it's, it's, I, I think with this image, it's mostly a compositional thing for me. Like, I just don't think that I, per, I mean, I'm not a landscape photographer by any means, but like, I don't think that I personally would have stood here. Um, maybe the shot for me would have been like m more to the right, where actually, where this table or this pier, whatever this is, was not in the shot. And maybe the lake sort of led into like these two log cabins and there was just like more sky and 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 um more dimension from the from the right side facing to those uh, cabins. I probably would have walked around and took um many shots of this scene, and I don't know that this would have been the the um the scene that I would have chosen. Um that being said, uh I I mean when when you see an artist price lower um, an image that you feel is one of the weaker images. It, it kind of makes you think, well, you know, maybe the artist feels the same way. And when the strongest images for me are the highest price ones, it makes me think, well, maybe the artist feels the same way. Um, you know, little things like that. I mentioned, oh, we changed the, did you just change the, this is great when people are, wait, yeah, when people are changing things in real time, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're listening and they're changing things in real time, I think that's great. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you can change stuff like like the uh, capitalization on this and remove the period because you don't need a period in the title. That's something that I think could make this look more clean. And then also, like even you know, like and I, like I don't know if like I said, I don't know if you can do these things after the fact and. I don't know how how much that matters to collectors, but uh, before I meant to, uh, you know, in the artist, um, for the artist, they, they did say this is their first minted collection. I think this is a damn good job for a first minted collection, um, especially, in the, you know, they, they, you know, they have descriptions and, um, and everything like that. So, uh, and they ask, do they ask about pricing when you look at the question here? Uh, first, what does license mean? Okay, the licenses and then and is it fairly priced? Um, all right, so um, we'll speak on the, the licensing part first. So licensing is basically uh, the privileges that you're giving to the new owner of the image, right? So like... Um, I usually give commercial and editorial uh, licensing 
um, which you know allows for them to to use the uh, use the images commercially and through editorial. Um, they can they can make T-shirts if they want or coffee mugs out of my images. Like I I don't mind. Like it's up to like it's up to what you mind what people do with the work. But you know, in the license, I like to say that you know like um, I'm you know, part of the licenses that I'm always credited as the, the original creator. I mean, that's really important just because you own an image now doesn't mean that you, um, that you're the creator. Um, maybe, maybe you could expand a little more on licenses. If you know more, uh, about it than I do, um, you think license will be, uh, more important in the future as, as the spaces ramp up and, um, more, uh, uh, I guess I guess outside and traditional collectors and agencies begin to buy images that they want to use um, for marketing and products and stuff. Yeah, I don't know that I can add a whole lot. One of the things that I do on um, you know object and open C is I um, state that you know while I won't go ahead and remint this as a one of one, well when, once it's been purchased that I do reserve the right to make an animated version of it or a derivative, which uh, gives me a little bit of wiggle room there, but I don't have a lot to add. Yeah, I mean, I can just kind of show like what I what I put for licensing on my OpenSea. Um, you know, license, and I, you know, this is copy and pasted from someone else and you can copy and paste from me uh, if if you agree with this type of licensing. Um, primary NFT holder is free to use in advertising, display privately and in groups, including virtual galleries, documentaries, and essays by the holder of the NFT. As long as the creator is credited, copyright remains with the creator. Um, this is very simple and to the point for me. Um, properties is something we really didn't talk about because I don't know that you could add properties on foundation unless you've minted your own contract on manifold and you said this is your first collection but um, when you can add properties to things like when you're using OpenSea, I think it's a good idea to have that uh, license in there I have licensed commercial and editorial um, I have a lot of different licenses and I mean different properties in here that you don't need but um, artist name is very important to me um, addition size, addition limited to 10. Um, and like for me, I, I like to have the dimensions and the, um, the DPI so they know that they get printed at a high quality uh, level. But you can, you can come into my, uh, my Lost in Transit collection if you'd like and you can, you can take my licensing if it's aligned with what, um, what you want for, um, for your licensing. I think the two operant things there, the most important, are uh, for you as the artist that one, you can do A, B, and C as long as you get credited, and two, that the copyright remains with you. Yeah, that's it's the biggest part. Like, <laughs> imagine a collector that buys stuff and says, "Oh no, this is mine. I made it. Now I own it." Like, <laughs> be very. I, I haven't heard of it, but I mean, you'll you'll hear about just about anything in this world. I mean, people will. Uh, people will do just about anything. So yeah. best to protect your ass. <laughs> That's what I like to say. It's best to protect your ass. Uh, pricing wise, I already talked about how the pricing is like quite confusing for me here. Um, I I think this is one of the strongest images, but I don't think it's um, one ETH strong compared to um, images that you have for like, like this is 0 0.05. So this is a decimal away from half of an ETH. So, um, you know, you're saying that this image is, you know, what, four times, uh, worth four times more than this one. Um, in my honest opinion, I mean, I if I could choose to own one, I'd rather own this one, not because of the price, uh, but because I just think it's um, it's a more compelling image to me. Um, there's, more, there's more of a story, there's more depth um in this image so your pricing is a little a little strange to me as uh, coming in from a collector i'd be like um i don't know you know you know i'd probably buy just buy this image for this image because i really like them um and they're priced really low um in comparison um now 
Um, you could set your prices to whatever you want. Um, but I, I don't, I don't really know many collector. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't really know many artists in the space, like even the biggest of biggest artists. Like if you take someone like Justin Aversano, who's considered like probably the biggest or drifter shoots or whatever artist in the space. Um, like Justin, when, when he mints a new project, even twin flames, which, you know, they sell for like a floor price of a hundred ETH right now. Um, the original prices on primary are something more like 0 0.25 or 0 0.3. Um, so um, I would take that into consideration just to understand that um, a lot of artists don't come in with a primary price of one ETH. Usually, you know, it takes some time to build up to that through selling your work. But that doesn't mean that, you know, someone like might not might come in here and really resonate with this and buy it for one ETH. Like that's totally plausible and it's, and uh, it can totally happen. I think, I think it has happened. There's, there's no hard, you know, there's no real hard rules to any of this stuff. I mean, what would you have to say about pricing, Steve? Um, I, well, I agree. The progression is a little bit um, uh, unusual here, or it would make one scratch their head a bit going up from 0 0.025 to 1. So, I mean, that's something that you could change. Um, uh, you know, and it does communicate a message that if you don't feel that these, the first two aren't as in the same league as the other two, and then this top one here is in a league by itself, I think it makes people wonder what, to, why. So it says yeah. something to you and your confidence or lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Cool. I mean, I think we covered everything in the collection. I think there's some beautiful works in here. Um, you know, I think you could look like I, this photo did grow on me, um, but I don't know that it belongs in this collection. It, it, it looks out of place a bit, um, but I'm sure um, this artist has a lot more snow pictures that maybe can replace the first two. I do think the first shot is the weakest of the bunch. Um, so like me personally, I would, I would probably um, move these out of the collection and add um, either two new pieces or just keep these three pieces up uh, and going. Um, I think that's but, one other thing and then we should I move on. One is good job on replacing the banner so fast. Uh, I think one of the things has to do with the actual presentation, the order in which things appear and the way that things appear next to each other. Um, we've got that window is roughly the same size as the entire structure next to it there, which is then, um, you know, in relation to what came before and what came after, those two are very different, but I think it's the window being roughly the same size as the structure maybe throws one off a little bit from just looking at this as a collection. And I mean, collection is, it is a collection of curated works that fit together. I mean, imagine if you were doing these in uh, an exhibition, you know, would this be the logical order? And maybe it is, or maybe not, but that's, something that one needs to think about when uh, minting these things or listing these things rather in terms of what's the order going to be how do they fit together compositionally in terms of color etc very well said curation is uh, uh, certainly really important um, and um, and overlooked looks like uh, looks like the artist Steve uh, says he didn't have permission to unmute but thanks y'all. No problem, man. Um, that's why we're here. Um, and you know, um, my DMs are always open. I think it's like you weren't able to come up and speak. Um, but um, yeah, if uh, if you had any questions, uh, please feel free to hit us up and um, keep making beautiful work. We, uh, we appreciate you. <clears throat> that being said, um, I think we can move on then to um, we have a collection, it's, it's, it's called um, Mayu Drops, and this is by Matab. Um, and they actually linked, uh, when they linked me the collection, they actually just linked me to their OpenSea account. 
So there is two. Uh, so I don't know which collection they want me to look at, but I know it's one of the drop, the whatever drop collections, one of the my drop collections. So, but I guess we can take a look at um, both of them then. Uh, that's fine. Um, uh, first thing I notice is like creator fee is 3.5%. Um, I don't know, as a photographer, I like to have my creator fee at 10%. I don't know why I would limit myself on my creator fee. Um, Pain is Polygon. Uh, it always confuses me a little bit when people choose the Polygon chain because I feel like it's it's just not not used as much and people are just not converting their ETH to the Polygon side enough, even when we were in like a bull market. So um, I, I don't, I, I don't know too much about the Polygon side of it and what the benefits and downsides are. Do you know, Steve? Um, it used to be, um, I believe it used to be cheaper in terms of minting, but on OpenSea, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not sure, actually. And I have so much trouble, frankly, converting back and forth between ETH and Poly that I just don't buy anything that's on Polygon. So. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's that, that hinders the ability in sales um, to some, you know, to some regard, because there's people that just won't, that just aren't willing to do it because there's so much work on the ETH side and then you have to jump these hurdles to get it on the Polygon side. And with every transaction is a risk of, of making a mistake, uh, moving things. Um, so um, yeah, I don't know if the creator fees are different on the Polygon side, but as far as I know, most photographers are using a 10% creator fee in your royalties. Um, the other thing I noticed was no, um, no link to Twitter here, which I think is an important link as it's Twitter's the bridge to uh, NFT uh, and Web3 decentralization. I think it's the most important out of any of these Discord, um, Instagram, etc. Um, the uh, let's take a look. Um, the artist statement: All of my photos has been created by Water Drops. They are incredible and unique. Um, you know, I just. I think it's very vague. Um, it's it's you know it's a little bit just like to the point. Um, they're water drops. You know I I can already tell that they're water drops. Um, I can already tell that they're incredible and unique um, because you know you can't recreate um, for the most part a photograph in general, uh, especially one that you know that spreads like water and you'll never be able to say create the same one twice. So you're kind of just telling me something I already know. I'd rather know more about who you are. I don't I don't know anything about you. I don't I and I don't have a link to your Twitter. I so I I'd rather know, you know, I'd rather I'd rather I'm saying I have a I have a link to your Twitter. Um but I, I can't get it from you. I'm trying to speak as if I'm someone who just opened up your project from OpenSea, right? So um, I don't know much about you. Uh, I want to know why, like, you know, like what has intrigued your mind into saying, because you could take photographs of anything, right? Like the interesting thing about photography is it's the entire world. It's anything in front of you. I see, I look, I can look around my house right now. I look, I see my, my lamp, my keyboard, uh, my coffee mug, I'm looking out my window, I can see, um, the ocean, um, cars in the parking lot, um, clouds. So you can literally photograph anything. So like what draws you to want to photograph water drop um, that, you know, that high, high speed photography water drops. Like I want to know your story and what got you into this. Do you have a scientific mindset? What is it? You know, that is intriguing to me as a collector and that's missing from here. Um, so I'm just looking at a few things so far that I find missing or that what would I think could be helpful. Um, if we go down and look into the images, well, we have, um, so there's less than one ETH volume traded, which means, well, there's, looks like there's a sale here at 0 0.050. Um, and uh, floor price 0 0.025. It doesn't look like the, the floor price 
that much. It goes from 0 0.025 to 0 0.05. Zero. So it's three different price points. You get some at 0 0.030. Um, so yeah, that's 67% of them are listed, 11% unique owners. Let's just take a look at the activity on these. Um, so it looks like 10 days ago, uh, you had a sale uh, for Violet at 0 0.050. Congratulations on the sale. Take the cut back here. Um, just looking at the images overall, um, consistency is there. Um, you have some consistency. Um, colors are really beautiful. Shutter speed seems really uh, correct for capturing uh, still uh, still moments in time. Uh, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking to myself, which one is the most intriguing to me? Um, and I think it's, I think it's the, these are, I think it might be actually Lale here got this feel of minimalism, very simple. I love the blue, um, the one blue drop that just captured uh, midair. And I love the color, the color contrast here. I think yellow complements purple and blue and green really, really well. And I just, I love, I love the ripples on the surface of the water. I think this one uh, is, is really strong to me. Um, so it's maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the ones that have the a less is more feel. I kind of like these ones that are a bit lower, lower to the uh, lower to the ground as well, a lower in um in composition. This is great too. You see every little drop coming off. Colors are beautiful. Um, and then there's some of the ones that that stand tall, right? Um, like like this one for instance. Though I I I love this. I do feel like I've seen this this type of shot done more often from people do who are doing um, high speed um, still life water drop photography. Whereas some of these other compositions, like the one um, the ones that that are a bit lower, like this perspective, I haven't seen much, and I think that that really draws me to it. And I love I love just the little pinch of green that that go around the uh, the ring here. I think this is really really well done. Um, Something confuses me though about some of these. I, I and it's not the visuals. It's when I open it. Um, so there's ten items of this one, right? So you have ten editions. Um, it, it's showing that I guess five is listed. And so if if I was to buy this right now, I'm gonna get five pieces of this. I realize that that's a mistake. I think you have to go back. I know you have to go back and you have to remove this listing because you're giving away five for 0 0.025. Um, I'm, I'm correct, right, Steve, on that? Like, that, that, that's what will happen if you were to purchase this. No, oh, I'm, hang on a second. I just, I was actually going out and looking at OpenSea so I could see it more clearly here. So. Same thing here. Yeah. Same thing here. You're giving away five out. Of, you're giving away all of these ones because this one is an addition of five. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing now too because you just had an, an addition of ten within the same collection as an addition of five. Something like that just so, is, as simple as just just messes with your floor prices on your overall collection because you you're inconsistent about your addition sizes within the same collection, which is something that I would not generally do. But you're also giving away all of these additions uh, for, the, for the price of, I believe, what you want to give one away, because that would make no sense for why you would want to give five pieces to a single, um, a single person. Um, outside of that, I'm looking at properties. Um, uh, I would definitely have your artist name and the additions in here. Especially since the additions are getting a little confusing here. I think this is an addition of five. So you can have um, addition limited to five. Uh, your artist name license would be great in here if you want to give commercial and editorial licensing on your stuff. So that's that's something that I that I noticed. Um, Steve, looking through these, like, you know, I, I'm noticing a lot of things that feel like could have could have um, been fixed before the, the minting process, which is why, you know, I'm trying to push for 
more people to um, to do pre-minted uh, AMAs so that they can um, create the correction uh, collection right the first time so that they don't have to go back on on um, on some of on some of on some of this because it's well at least with with open C it's it's lazy minting so you could go and, and correct some of this stuff but just would like to hear your overall thoughts on the uh, the collection some of the stuff that I've talked about uh, Steve sure so let's go back to it and uh, you want to go back to the collection itself. Yeah. Oops. I can't hear you, Steve. Um, do you want to go back to the collection itself? There you go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I had to mute myself because my, my girlfriend was talking to me. Okay. Cat. So <laughs> if you go back, I would agree with the description there that um, I, I think that, um, you know, I agree with Mike that you stated the obvious here and the why is important or what is it that excites you about these things um i mean what's so remarkable i think about water drops is that they're happening all the time okay all around us you know and if you can drill down and see them that it's almost like it's an alternative universe sitting right there and it's quite wonderful yet water drops are happening all the time we just don't get to see them the i, I think that um getting at the excitement about what is it that you're, makes you passionate about them. This is my favorite, this green one here, I have to say. I do like that an awful lot. Uh, go back to the banner, by the way. I, I think that the second and the fourth and the banner are the strongest. The um, third one is kind of out of scale with the other ones there, and I don't think it's as appealing. And the same with the first one. Uh, I might choose two other ones there, uh, but uh, again, that's just a personal preference there. If you scroll down, please, and we look at the collection itself, some of them have titles like um, Lilla, Other Mayu Foundation, and then we have Light Foundation. Um, I'm I'm not sure uh, what what those mean. Why or two? Mayu Foundation and Umbrella, and then it was just Light Foundation. Uh, I guess it's because, and pardon me for being ignorant here, not understanding what uh, Mayu means in this context here. So, um, that, that could be edited in the description. Right? That would be a good exactly. thing to have in the description there. Exactly. And um, I think going from, you know, three on ETH to one on wrapped ETH, two on wrapped ETH is also a little bit uh, confusing. From a consistency standpoint here uh the images i think are terrific and um i think they're uh they're it's a cohesive collection in terms of the tonality and um i think you've done a great job with these and that um to get to the next level here it's conveyor excitement and uh yes as mike mentioned you've seen a few of these things before sure there's a lot of water stuff around i think these are, are very very good but make me want to get more excited about these because of how you're approaching it and your passion for them. So those are my suggestions. Sure. And then clicking on the one that you really liked, um, you know, five is owned by Mayu Drops. It looks like it's an addition of five, but then why did, you know, why did you list four? But not only do I did you, but you're you're listing four to one person. So you have to you have to list one at a time. You have to go back and remove these listings, um, and and list one at a time. So you're gonna list uh, one of uh, you're gonna list one of them at zero point zero three, and then another one at zero point zero three. You, know, you can list two if you want, and then when they sell, you can just keep listing one one other one. But right now, you're giving away almost all of them, so that's the biggest concern of mine from this collection. And you know, obviously, the um, the, the artist statement we talked about, the royalties of only three point five percent, the um, the missing link to your Twitter. But other than that, I mean, the work is really gorgeous. It's just um, 
it's just uh, just a lesson in um, how to how to drop a collection um, in a way where you um, you you checked all the areas. Like maybe it's a good idea to um, write in a notepad all the areas that you need to look at before creating a collection. Right? Is are my royalties uh, set uh, to a percentage that's uh, the most fair? Right? which chain is this body of work going to move best on? Um, is my description personal and can connect to collectors or is it too uh, deliberate? Um, how are my descriptions? What, uh, what, are, what are the properties that I need to have in there that are the most important? Um, is, is my banner the best possible looking banner that I can have for the um, first impression uh, of my presentation? Uh, it, it are, you know, is, is it consistent in the amount of additions that each one has? And am I, you know, is everything correct in what, I, what I'm doing? So there's, you know, there's a lot of things here before creating a collection that, you know, maybe it's best to uh, practice having a list of, of things of each different uh, area that you want to hit so that that collection um, is, is just feels like it's presented very uh, professionally. So um, with that being said, let's take a look. At how, how do you, how do you, um, how do you, how do you price Opinion on abstracts for collectors. Um, you know, for, for since these are editions, I mean, and they're different different tiers of editions, it's hard to tell you how to price it. Um, I think, I mean, I enjoy editions of 10. I think it's not too many and it's still scarce. I like the idea of 0 0.025. That's pretty good, I think, for editions of 10. Um, I like, I think, I think keeping the additions lower, if you don't have a reach or audience is, uh, is a really smart, is a really smart idea. Opinion on abstracts for collectors is, um, is that it doesn't matter what genre you're in. I often hear a lot of people saying, well, black and white doesn't seem to sell or street photography doesn't sell and only landscape sells and this and that but i think it's really has a lot more to do with you and your brand um and like your voice and the emotion that you can convey through whatever, whatever genre it is that i don't think that there's any clear answer as to what genres work and don't work on here. I think they all work and that it's up to us to, to make them work. I don't know if you have anything else to add here, Steve. No, I think that uh, you summarized it well. And just to reiterate that point about presentation, that uh, my feeling, and I don't know if this could be backed up, but I have a feel, I have a hunch that you got about three to five seconds when someone hits your page, okay, your your listing page, and their opinion is going to be shaped very quickly. And it does start with the banner. It's not just, a, oh, this is another thing, hoop, i got to jump through here. I think it's very important that right from the top down that it all fits together, that the banner draws you in, the images draw you in, the description reinforces the image, and... From there, people will decide whether or not they actually want to collect. So I think um, looking at those elements, uh, it's critical for everybody. I don't care where you are in this. So well said, Mike. Thank you, Steve. Um, moving on to the next collection. Uh, this is a collection called the Sa Young Hong Opera Tongue. This is by Peter Nitsch. Uh, he doesn't have any, uh, any general questions. Um, so we will just take a look at the collection, um, noticing he has his creator uh, royalties at 10%. That's great. Um, there's 10 images within the collection. It's created back in January. Um, I don't see a Twitter link. I would like to see a Twitter link in here since I know they have a Twitter. Let's read the description. 
Um, these 10 photographs shot in Bangkok in 2019 for the photo book Tango in the Big Mango provide a behind the scenes look into Japanese opera in Thailand. Very interesting because it's in Thailand, but it's Japanese opera. The performance starts at 8 p.m. 8 p.m., but the story of the people behind the characters uh, were told before the actual performance. The show uh, reverberates through the, the courtyard and will end around midnight that evening. So about a four hour show. Uh, interesting. So well, let's dig into some of these uh, images here. I sorted it by oldest. I like to sort things by oldest because that's usually when the first, well, that's when the first one is minted up into the last. And kind of makes me think that that's probably how the artist would want, um, would want it displayed. Uh, let's take a look at activity. I know this came out a long time ago, this project, 10 months ago. And so if you look at the activity, we have, we have a bunch of sales to different artists or collectors. And yeah, they were all different, uh, except for this, 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 you know, this uh, man or woman bought two pieces. Um, and the last sale was eight months ago. So it looks like a collection that has sat stagnant um, for at least the last eight months. Um, that's not something completely unusual. Uh, I do see now the Twitter link. I was wrong. I see a Twitter link here. That's great. Um, and so um, price ranges from, let's see, let's just do all this. 0.09. <clears throat> to looks like the last sale is 0 0.15. It looks like 0 0.15 is the uh, is the highest sales. And so let's take a look through some of this. One thing I notice is that the titles are just the title of the collection uh, in each image, and then there's just a number. Um, you know, uh, a lot of us guilty of just numbering our images back when. Um, earlier in NFT when photography, like about a year ago, I did the same thing, number one, number two, number three. We're kind of straight from doing that now. Don't really, I don't think we really need a number. You can kind of sort it by all this, just see on the blockchain when the first one was minted, the second one. And the only way to really see them in order is to do it by oldest, rather than, you know, recently listed or priced high to low. But, it looks as though a lot of the images, a good portion of these images, more than 50% have already sold. Um, but then the other ones were never relisted. Um, so it makes me think, wonder, you know, um, where is this, where is the artist? What are they doing? Um, and are they, um, are they telling the story of, of this collection anymore? And so uh, with that being said, let's, you know, take a look into some of the images of the collection. <clears throat> of like um, behind the scenes rather than the actual performance, which is really cool. We're looking at behind the scenes work. Beautiful shot. Might be easier just not to open it with this open C. <clears throat> just see it from a, from a distance. It looks like a backstage putting on the uh, makeup before performances. Read this, a distinctive and raw portrait of contemporary Bangkok and its inhabitants that remains as uh, complicated as uh, in, in, uh, inscrutable. Like Tango, Bangkok has influences from many countries. The photographic documentary concept explores the question of identity and the boundaries between growth and angst a finite attempt uh, at conce uh, conceiving of the inconceivable, inconceivability you know, as life. Interesting, so I'm um, wondering if that's the description for, um, for each one. It is, so, you know, um, one thing bothers me a bit is the, 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 the copy pasting of the, of the, the actual um, the actual title of the entire project, and then that's copy and pasted into the uh, to the title of each image, and then the artist statement or whatever is 
uh, copy and paste it into each photograph. Um, whereas, you know, it'd be nice if, um, you know, if this had a name, a title that had something to do with the photograph. Um, if the description had something to do more with the photograph, it's good to see uh, the properties have a artist name and addition in there. Licensing would be a, another, another good thing to add on pieces that have not sold. Um, this is a beautiful piece though. Like, um, you know, the, it looks like the mother is, uh, is putting on her makeup, getting ready, and she has brought her kids to, uh, her kids to work. You know, one thing I notice a lot of these images for me, there they are there are a lot of elements that are a bit uh, a bit busy. Uh, like there's a lot going on between you know these strings and stuff here, and this looks like a styrofoam piece um, on on a table here, and maybe a spoon. Uh, a lot of elements that don't exactly lend to the full story for me, like a, this contemporary car in the background. Whereas I don't know that. Um, you know, if I look at this as a whole, it feels uh, very busy. Um, then you go into some of the images and you notice that, you know, maybe it's not as busy as it looks from afar. Good to open up those, uh, those individual images. I'm just gonna uh, try to just look at it from here because OpenSea is doing this thing where it's, if it's not minted on manifold, it's taking forever to open the the, uh, the actual image. But um, yeah, another another behind the scenes um, shot. Yeah, I tend to want to want to wonder in my head like what. I love black and white, but I, I I do I there's a part of me that really wants to see what some of these look look like in color, just because um, you know there is a lot going on in some of these images and maybe. Uh, maybe color can actually even um, take away from from how it feels like there's there's so much happening. I think in black and white, a, a lot of times I like um, more uh, minimal images. Um, you know, color can provide distraction, but when it but sometimes it could also fill in elements to make things less distracting. So. I wonder with you know, a project like this that has a lot to do with makeup, like what 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 different color makeups they're wearing and how how uh, this image could possibly be more dynamic in um, in color. This shot, uh, I think I think this shot is maybe one of my favorites. It's really interesting how you can see the the reflection of um, of one of the uh, one of the people uh, from the show. It looks like just after they're done putting on the makeup, you can. Uh, well, I, I'm guessing now that that's actually a reflection from this um, this man here, because you can see the headphone in the ear, or maybe it's not, because this headphone um, it curves off, and this headphone goes straight down. So it happened to either be the opposite side of the face, or that's coming from someone else. So uh, images that make me ask questions rather than give answers, I, I usually tend to gravitate towards, I really do enjoy that image. And that's 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 been collected. Um, then you have some images that are a little less busy, uh, like these two images or this image in particular, where you took the, um, you took the model out, out outside of all of the elements. Now, I don't think it's a bad thing to have elements and photographs to tell an environmental story, um, unless those elements kind of confuse and busy up the frame to the point where um, the story becomes muddled because the, the elements don't, um, don't lend to the actual story. Whereas uh, a photograph like this, um, I really don't have any distractions. I'm very I'm very drawn into these eyes and these and this really geometric angular um, like hair and makeup and how that's done here and just the this moment between where it looks like sh um, she or he has a uh, one of those makeup removers where we're just tapping the lip and it's a it's just a moment in between moments that I felt was really really nice. Um, same thing here with uh, with this shot, um, where we're we're getting that mirror image. Tim Russell owns this. Tim Russell's a great documentary photographer, so 
um, he must have liked this shot as well. Very intense gaze into the uh, into the mirror here. Um, really do uh, really do like that one. Um, you know, overall, I think it's a it's a it's a pretty good and interesting um, story in, into documentary. I think there's you know a lot of repeating things though, like putting on the makeup in this image, putting on the makeup in this image, uh, putting on the makeup in this image, and um, you know it's since since to sort of be um, a bit of a theme where like you know maybe you don't need that many um, showing uh, that aspect of it, but um, I I I love behind the scenes documentary. And I think it did a, it, this is a pretty, pretty good job at showing the uh, behind the scenes. Um, that being said, Steve, have you, have you been able to get a good look at the collection and um, wonder what you take from the collection? Uh, anything that uh, I've said that you maybe agree or disagree with? Oh, I, I like this very much. And um, uh, I, I think that uh... The black and white uh, certainly, you know, for for me, it fits the uh, like the facial makeup there. I mean, uh, I really like the contrast and the monochrome treatment here. I would like to have more context for these in terms of what is going on, and that um, uh, it it bothers me a little just to see the pasted on description at the end here, which is more of a testimonial, or it looks like it's a part of something from the book that these appeared in. Um, so it would be, hang on a second here, scroll back down again. Yeah, this is repeated each time. And it's, uh, it would be nice to know, just even just a couple sentences or so, what's going on. The um, Mike surmised that it was a woman whose child was there while she was working. We don't know that. I mean, I don't know if you knew that um, as the artist. Uh, you know, where, where are these people in the behind the scenes? Is there a theater? Is that out on the street? Um, what, where, well, obviously this is part of on the street here. This is quite an interesting image here. And, you know, maybe you don't know all the details, but, you know, you certainly know more than the, than the viewer does. Um, anyway, some additional context would be good. My favorite is the one in the mirror. And I think that's, well, I have two favorites. One is the one in the mirror because when you first glance at it, your eye goes to the mirror because that's so sharp. And then you've got to stop and think, ah, there's a face looking into the mirror. This is the back of the person. It's a very unusual photo. And just compositionally, I think that, um, you know, you've got the positioning just right. And the fact that the mirror is razor sharp and a little brighter, terrific. The one with the scooter or motorcycle, whatever it is, I like that one a lot too. However, um, tell me what it is. Is this, you know, it could be anything. The, the person on the scooter, what's what's he doing? Why is he there? There's another person there. You could see his knee there. But the main show is the scooter and there's a helmet there. Is What's, what's this guy doing? So, you know, it doesn't mar the photos, but it would certainly enhance the photos to have a better sense of what's going on back here. Absolutely. And I think even a title can just help that. I mean, even a title uh, sometimes can give an idea. Sure. You know, waiting for this, um, you know, um, you know, applying makeup or whatever it is, uh, Cy Young, you know, Opera True Dash, applying makeup. Again, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know what the what exactly these things are. So it seems like it's like um, sort of a like a, like a repeat thing with a lot of AMA sessions that um, just not hitting all the check check uh, check boxes of um, creating a collection where you know we talked about all those things right titles descriptions and like you know there's a lot of artists that are like well the speak picture should speak to itself and i don't need to have a description and stuff like that okay fine um you know like i said there's nothing that's black and white but i think it's a good idea to to like look at some of the people that have put together really great collections that have done really well that you you're inspired by or who you admire and look at the little things like the little details like like little things sometimes seem like little things uh but a lot of times they 
they actually equal a lot. And when there's a lot of little things that are missing, then they really equal up to a lot because, you know, a lot of, I'm sure that we're not the only ones that are paying attention to, um, you know, some of these things, obviously. And I come from this paying attention to stuff with a, um, with an artist and a collector's um, perspective. But I didn't mean to can't cut you off there though, Steve, if you had more. No, I, I agree. And I think this is a very strong collection. And with these little uh, checkmark items, uh, you know, fixed, it would be even more compelling. Yeah, and it's almost sold out. So congrats to... Yeah, I uh, to the fact, right. <laughs> I love this red, uh, this red with the uh, black and white too. This uh, this S Y H O T, which is the the, the Cy Young Hong opera at the time. I, lo I love that they did that because I, I always like the way black and white looks with a little hint of uh, hint of red there. So I love the banner. I think the banner is beautiful. Um, and is that a shot from the collection? I think it. I think it is because I remember that face. Um, here it is here. Oh, yeah, wonderful, uh, wonderful banner and um, beautiful documentary work. So um, yeah, being said, I'm going to move on to the next collection here. Um, next collection is uh, Sites of the Beautiful Lagos City. Um, this is by uh, uh, Omar Siegel Victory. Uh, they just generally want um, criticisms. Um, and does the collection have the potential to be great? So, um, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just go over what I go over with everyone, right? Um, my first impressions are always the banner, the opening image, what links you have. So, um, there's a few things here already that are, um, let me just see if it's my screen. No, not necessarily. So, um, yeah, the banner seems like it was you know it, it 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 wasn't a lot of thought put into this because you have repeating images in the banner like why is the museum photo in here twice then why is the the boat photo um on on here in here twice just on top of each other uh then if you look at the image here the the same thing two two of these um steeples or uh, Whatever this is, the blue sky, the 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 the, uh, the museums, it, you just have it's just all repeating images. Like, I would rather have just a black background with one photo in here, and I think it could look more professional than than this does here. Or just take an image that has like a good aspect ratio from like horizontal from left to right, and put it as your banner. But the banner is really confusing it's like images over and over again that are the same images um you're missing your instagram twitter discord website whatever is important to you twitter i think is the most important one obviously we spoke to the fact that it's the bridge uh to web three um sites of the beautiful lago city some of this i think should be capitalized like Sites is capitalized. That's good. Of and the, I do not need to be capitalized. Um, beautiful Lagos and city should probably be capitalized. When I look up what like should and shouldn't be capitalized, I think there's stuff like a and of the like three letter words and below my you know like um, don't necessarily need capitalization. But I would probably capitalize this. I'm being very pick, mid picky here, but this is how I look at collections when I look at them. Um, now I'm moving on down here, five items. When it was created, it was created this month, okay? Um, you're giving yourself 5% royalties. I, once again, I don't know why not give 10% royalties. There's no one shaming artists, uh, photographers for taking 10% on royalties. Um, Ethereum chain, photography. Um, then I look at the description. So, um, Lagos City, one of the busiest cities in Lagos, um, can be both crazy and beautiful, and that's what makes it unique. Um, not enough for me exactly. Like, 
you know, most cities are crazy and beautiful. Like New York City is crazy and beautiful. Most cities in the world, I think, are. Um, you know, New York's one of the busiest cities. I I just I don't know that much about Lagos by reading this. I don't know that much about like why Lagos is um, important to you. Are you from Lagos? Uh, you know, there's information that's just missing here to me. Like, wh uh, why are you into this stuff? Photography, what, whatever it might be that comes from you that adds a human element is missing from dollar statement. Okay, move down. Um, so zero ETH total volume, for price is 0 0.09. And uh, has, there's, hasn't been any sales. So zero, go from 0 0.09 to 0 0.125 to 0 0.6. So um, this image here is about 7x more um, than uh, the theater, the old church and the tower. So um, take a look through some of the images. Let's look at the one that's, that's the most, uh, more than half of an ETH, uh, the busy market. And, you know, looking at this image, um trying to open it big here okay um um i you know i i think this is the best shot in the collection i think that this shot shows that you have a lot more potential than some of the other images in this collection and here's why like the color relationship in this is really beautiful yellows and the blues and then the rustic um buildings um the layers in this image the fact that like there's not much really overlapping that bothers me in this uh it feels like i'm looking down into this whole world that i know nothing about um and i love it um your resolution is not good in this image though like you um I don't know if you're taking the image on a really low resolution phone um, or you are just like uploading it to the computer, editing it, and then saving it with a lower resolution than, than has the highest capacity because I can't see full detail on this. And I know that it's not my screen, but I think that the busy market is the strongest image here. Um, guessing it's a one of one, but like, I can only guess that it's a one of one because there is no information. Um, so it says, a, a pictorial representation of a typical Lagos market, busy and bustling with life. That's not a bad description, but I, I don't, there's no properties, um, and you know, even so without properties, you can put, you know, like addition one of one, um, right. If it's a one of one, cause like I could buy this for more than half of an ETH. And then you, like, you can go ahead and say like, oh, that's actually like a one of 10. I wouldn't have any idea. I need some type of, um, I need some type of digital signature or something that at least carries over to me when I buy this, that tells me about exactly what I'm getting. I want, I would want this to be a one of one if I'm paying, um, um, 715 USD 0 0.6 ETH. So let me go back. Now, um, after looking at this image and like how much layers and beauty you could present in an image, um, I think some of these other images fall really short in comparison. And I think maybe you do too, considering that you pricing it, um, six times uh, higher than the other images. So for instance, like the theater, um, and that's this image is not up there in your banner or anything either. So the theater, for instance. So now this is not a one of one. This is 10, this is addition of 10, and you're selling all 10 of them to one person for 0 0.09. So. This is an issue right now that a lot of people are having that they don't understand that OpenSea does not do a good job at additions. And I think that you need to use like either a background, a, 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 a backend code to create an addition. Well, maybe not anymore because it says you own 10, 
but you still don't want to list 10 in one sale because you're selling all of them. You have to list one at a time, one at 0 0.09, then the next one at 0 0.09. Unless you want one person to own all 10 of these, and that would make no sense as an addition because the point of additions is to give the ability to more artists and collectors to be a part of your um, artistic ecosystem. So you don't want to give all 10 of them to one person. You're, you're, you're killing your scarcity for the ability to give it to one person because of this mistake, which you need to correct. Um, as far as the image goes, um, if OpenSea is going to let me open it, <clears throat> um, you know, I would say that I don't really know what the subject is. Like, this is called the theater, but there's more trees blocking the theater than the actual theater. So, um, you know, compositionally, you know, I, I would have set myself up in a different place if I wanted to create an image about the theater. Like, maybe this left side of the image over here, you could sneak in and frame the theater with this frame. And, you know, some of these, this orange um, leaves can be like a frame around the theater. But the way you framed it here, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, compositionally, you have this line coming up here that just like dissects a weird portion of the image and brings my eye there. Um, and so looking at theater after looking at busy market feels like, definitely feels like two different, um, two different photographers. Um, the old church, um, you know, the old church is, it's, it's a beautiful shot, right? I mean, it's, you know, the architecture is gorgeous. You do have a nice cloud coverage a day. Once again, you're listing in the mall, all 10 of them for 0 0.09 to one person. Um, it's an addition of 10. Uh, let's read the description. The cathedral is one of uh, the few architectural masterpieces of old Lagos that has been left untouched and well-preserved. From the classic design of, of the outside to the cool interiors, you get this feeling that you're standing on a piece of history of not just Lagos, but Nigeria. It's actually the oldest uh, Angelican cathedral in Nigeria, and it dates from the 19th century. Uh, thanks to current church being a building, uh, th maybe it's thanks to the current church uh, building Sorry, thanks. The current church building was constructed in 1929. I think you could leave out thanks um, and just, just say the current church building was constructed in 1929. Missing some properties you could add in here. Um, addition 10, artist name, um, licensing. Um, but but yeah, there's, um, I don't know. I, I wonder how this image would be if you pulled back some. I wonder if there was um, there was a, a single subject walking uh, walking into the doors of the church that could create more of a story than just a centered architectural piece. I, I'm not sure what you could have done. Um, the tower, take a look at the tower. Um, you know, tower is it's an interesting you know upshot. This is an addition of five at the same price as the addition of ten. I don't really know how you're coming up with your pricing system here and your additioning system, but I would definitely try to be more consistent um, in your additioning uh, and your and your and your pricing. Um, you know, interesting shot. Might be more interesting if if you know there was birds flying through or maybe an airplane coming through or something that can be a subject that these buildings are leading me into, or maybe even you know um, you know one of these one of these windows has has someone in the window or some birds perched up on the ledges or something. <clears throat> and then the dock, which I saw a real issue with here. So you uploaded this image and the image actually says one of two on the image. So I see you having a real issue in organization um, with, within your computer, you, it, with, with saving your images, with, it seems like you just right-click saved one of your own images from 
from a website that had one of two, just because maybe you couldn't find the image. Um, I'm not sure, but this is like as a collector, as an artist, as someone who's coming in here looking at this, um, I, I begin to wonder um, how you could have post, uh, posted up this image and, and had this label on here, which I'm not sure anyone's going to want because they're going to wonder, well, where is part two? Um, it doesn't come with it. It just says the old popular doc captured at sunset. Um, sunset is not really realized here because it's it, the sky is just pure white. The highlights are very blown out. Um, I would probably bring down your exposure a lot before I, I created this image. So, you know, you know, a very constructive critique here. I, I do understand that, um, but I, I want I want the artist to grow. So, like I said, looking at the busy market, um, it's just so beautiful. It has so many layers. But the resolution still doesn't seem right. Um, but it, it's it it's feels like it's taken by someone who has an eye for dimension layers uh, and storytelling at a level that the other images don't that fall, I feel that they fall short and that's 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 all that I have for uh, for this if you have anything to add Steve yeah I like the dock compositionally um, it's nice from a rule of third standpoint you've got things that nice intersects there uh, the highlights are totally blown out in the sky and uh, that's that's tough because recovering uh, blown highlights is very difficult. Certainly by taking down the highlights and the white point will help a bit. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, compositionally, I like this a lot. And uh, I think that if the sky wasn't blown out, it could have definitely, you know, been a, a very strong picture. I'm not sure what the one of two is either, uh, what that connects with. Um, I do like compositionally. My my eye likes the busy market a lot. Uh, I agree with Mike that the, the the resolution is problematic. I don't know if it's the image that you chose here or if that is the resolution of it, um, which would be too bad because there's so much stuff going on here. If it was razor sharp, that would be terrific. Some of these images appear to have borders around them, like. Is this my imagination? I'm actually looking at it on OpenSea. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you guys are going to see how terrible my desktop looks right, right now because of how busy I am. But um, I, I, I mean, want to, I saved it, so I want to see, like... Um, it looks like there's a, almost a digital frame on it, which which is not a problem. I'm just curious about it. On the, uh, the dock one, it looks like there's a line at the top. Well, there is on this. There is on this. If you look at my screen now, I saved the dot. This this shot, yeah. the busy oh. market. I don't. What, I don't know what the orange is on the right side or the the black line on the left. But the resolution is really hurting. And like, I mean, maybe like maybe let's see why. Like, if I right click it, um, it should allow me to save the the full size image, right? Well, you know, it's two hundred and nineteen kilobytes. It's it's a very small file size, um, and the details are showing. Um, yeah, it's pretty low res, and it's a small image as well. Yeah, so 1167 by 1968 is pretty small. I mean, I like to, you know, I like to save my stuff as 300 DPI in case the, the artist wants to print, but 72 DPI should be good for viewing, right, on... Uh, on web but uh, i mean even at this pixel dimension I, just, I don't know why the resolution should be this this tough um That's i would pretty, love to what go ahead. Now, go ahead it's a pretty cool composition great the composition is amazing um it just yeah it's just um hmm. sorry let me go back to Sorry, you guys had to see my crazy desktop. I have to do a spring cleaning on my desktop, which happens like once a month. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the megapixels on the phone. I, I think I think that this artist is actually in, like a phone photographer, a mobile phone photographer, based on their other other work. Because um, let me see. 
if I can go to some of the other work, like ETH underscore ETH, um, and then there's created. So like, you know, the same things going on here, like with this, this, the just, this just joy collection is that, you know, this resolutions, um, cause like they're beautiful images. It's just that the resolutions are extremely pixelated and we don't have any, um, information as to on this. Let's see, just joy. Maybe this tells what type of no matter what goes on in Africa, Africans still find a way to see the light remain happy. Um, even this image from far away, it looked, it looked really sharp. And then you open it up and it's, um, you know, once again, it's, it's got um, a very low res to it. And I would, I'd be careful. Look in this collection too, you're selling all 15 of them for the price of one. But yes. So. I would uh, I would sort out the resolution thing and and definitely um, <clears throat> definitely the additioning additioning thing as as well. And there, uh, add your um, add your Twitter and stuff on here as well, so we can find you. Um, but yeah, any of the other images you have anything to talk about? I mean, busy market is definitely the strongest for me. I agree with you on the doc being compositionally well done, um, and just working on that does exposure to not blow out the highlights. Um, but those were the two strongest for me. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Cool. So, um, yeah, so I'd, I'd love to move on then to, um, we have a, we have one last collection. This is, um, this is Fisherman's Tale and this is by, uh, uh, uh Lance. Lance, uh, S A Q, uh, U I B, Lance or L A N S E. It's a tough one for me to say. Um, and, um, it's just overall, overall view and, um, and, you know, the price. So let's, uh, Fisherman's Tale. Let's take a look at the description first. So the moment where the fisherman catches the fish, happiness and agony, light and darkness, joy and death come face to face. A fishing boat is considered as fishermen's best friend and their most important asset. Fishing is one of the toughest jobs in the world. A life of fishermen is very tiring and dangerous at the same time, uh, where their only companion is is fishing boat. A fisherman's tale is one of one drone photography collection of fishing boats. So, so you know what I'm getting from this description is the life of a fisherman why it's difficult, um, the happiness, the agony that goes along with this, there's joy to it, there's death, there's face-to-face -face interaction between uh, the, the, uh, the hunter and the, uh, the hunted. Um, fishing boat considered the best friend, the poor port asset. Fishing is one of the toughest jobs in the world. Life of fishing, very tiring and dangerous. So because it's a collection of drone photography, I feel that a lot of like what I think I'm going to see in this collection is not, not there. Right. Not to say that this collection is not a beautiful collection because I, I love drone photography. I love the perspectives and it is beautiful, but I, I, I would think that it sounds like it's going to be a bit more documentary and in your face from the actual description than, um, than what, what, what it is that we see. So, uh, first off, love the, um, you know, Love the, 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 the banner looks great. Fisherman's tail. Um, love the little piece you chose for the opening image is like the minimalism is great. Uh, got everything capitalized here. That looks good. Um, collection of five less is more I like that. Um, so let's take a look. Um, you know, looking at it, you see that there is, um, the pricing is the same across the board. That's something that I do like, um, Feel like it's, it's it's a lot less confusing it feels like you um you admire the pieces at this at the, at, you know you, you you love the you love the each piece as much as 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 the next and i feel like in a collection it's almost like um you know uh, why have I, I don't know why have pieces within a collection that are worth so much more uh, financial value 
or so much more value to you and then have other pieces in a collection that fall short to you. It may be, maybe so it's the way when I see that, it's like, well, why not wait until you have more images that have that similar value, right? And, and to see that it all across the board the same is a breath of fresh air for me. Like I said, there's no right way to do it, no wrong way to do it. I like to see it this way. Um, the image to me that stands out the most is actually the one that's purchased by Arwen um, because like just looking at it from afar, it's beautiful just to see those splashes. So we open this one up. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love, um, I love obviously the, the top down, the minimalism, but also the energy that we see um, being, you know, surrounding the boat. From from the from from the water and, and the boats probably rocking back and forth motion creating these uh, these ripples of, of of energy in the in the ocean that just go outwards and create a beautiful ring around the boat that just highlights this boat even more than its than its stark and bold color on a on a gray um, on a gray uh, seascape uh, so that shot for me is uh, really minimal uh, really successful. Um, I think they all are. I do. I do. I think the second favorite to me might be just these like two little floating beauties you call, um, you know, side by side. They have that middle, minimal aspect, top down, um, little story. Uh, and you don't really see the people on the boat, which, oh, actually, you do. You see a man right in the middle of the little boat here, a man or woman. Um, actually, so you see, actually, I'm, I, I'm seeing them all now. You see, there's, a, there's someone in the front in the yellow rowing. Someone in the middle, he's being lazy, and the other guy in the back, guy or girl in the back, and they're uh, they're rowing um, behind um, this boat that appears to um, be a boat that actually stores and carries a, a lot more. And it's a bit harder for me to see the uh, actual figures of the people on this boat, if if any. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're maybe they're rolling up to this boat to do an exchange of items or something or some sort. There's a nice story to that. Um, in between would be probably my third favorite. There's something really beautiful about the, um, about the, the, how the photo is sliced in half. Yeah, this looks like ice. I'm not sure. I think it is ice because you can see like these crackles in the top of the water here. And maybe this is moving through ice, which seems really dangerous and adds this interesting element of danger. And, um, but it's just, it looks like an abstract painting. Even if you were to take away the boat, just this on its own would be a gorgeous abstract painting with all the layers of of color and and scratches in the ice and um, you know the dark blues, light blues, the teal, the gorgeous uh, gorgeous image. Though I like, I do enjoy uh, enjoy these images, but the description doesn't tell me much about why you choose top down, what it's like to be a uh, to to take these images from. A bird's eye view, and the description to me feels a little more photojournalistic than it actually does um, landscape, which I, which I believe is is like a drone top down. I consider that more land or seascape. Um, Steve, yeah, I think there's quite a lot to to like here, and I think that I'm actually on foundation itself, so I get a clearer view of these things here. I think the headers are great. That's uh, that's very nice, and uh, I like how you did the the type overlay. Well, I guess it's just a graphic, but it's uh, it immediately tells you a fisherman sail. This is going to be something about fishermen, and clearly it's about boats, and it's top down. Um, I like these images. Uh, I think my favorite is floating beauties, and the reason is that I don't find the colors to be over booked. Um, I think that for my eye, or my taste anyways, that the in-between, that that red is so electric and fluorescent, it's almost unnatural. Um, it, I love the composition, and uh, Arwen has a great eye too, so that that's just my take on this. But um, I do very much like in-between, and uh, I, I like Shager, Shigar, however you pronounce it there. There's a nice subtlety about that, and um, I keep coming back and looking at that one. I think 
compositionally it's really interesting in that it's just slightly off center just a hair which is great uh in my mind anyhow um so i think these are are good very good some very strong ones i like the fact that you've got unique descriptions for them uh, my suggestion would be um some proofreading would be good um or read them out loud and that that's the best way to see if you've dropped a word or if a sentence makes sense here. So uh, again, this is a little thing here. I think the images are very strong, but I think you could tighten up the descriptions a little bit in terms of uh, you know, some of the formatting and making sure that there are any glitches there. This will be even stronger here. Agree with Mike that the pricing being consistent is good. And I think these are good prices for these two. So, um, I guess these were minted about nine days ago. I December think. 14th. Yeah. So um, I think these are very strong. And um, I'll bet you'll sell some more. Just, you know, promote, promote, promote. I agree. Totally well done. Um, I didn't read, I didn't read any of the descriptions, so let's read let's read Floating Beauties because I'm I'm most intrigued by that too. I think it's one of my favorites, the second favorite of mine. So um, the the fishermen know that the sea is dangerous and the storm terrible, but they have never found these dangers sufficient enough to stop them from going to the ocean. This top down shot was taken when fishermen were traveling to fishing trawler and mini boat. Since this place doesn't have a dock, fishermen has to anchor their trawler at a distance from the, from the shore and use the mini boat to travel from shore to trawler and back. So that makes sense to me. It's kind of like what I was saying before, before I read the descriptions. It feels like there's no one actually in this top boat, and it's kind of like a, an exchange and a drop-off point, which is really, really interesting. It seems like a lot of hard work. It's cool, and they have the extended editorial license. Let's read what their license says, because we talk about my license before and what I had. Um, can be used to display privately in commercial and non-commercial settings or in groups with an unlimited number of participants. The license includes unlimited use and display in virtual or physical galleries, documentaries, essays by the NFT holder as long as the creator is credited, provides no rights to create commercial merchandise, commercial distribution or derivative works. Dr. Eric Mains, it's creator. What's derivative work, Steve? Work like to, if you were to take hit the, this picture and create a collage or something? Well, you, you can modify it. Um, and um, the, the question is, you know, in order to, I mean, how far do you have to go to make it so that it's not just a clone here, but a derivative is um something that it provides no rights to create commercial merchandise commercial or derivative work so in other words if someone made something that was almost the same and just modified the color or whatever there's no right there um this is a foundation stock extended editorial license and it's it's pretty strong so it's a good one absolutely maybe that's something i add into mine is that there's no derivatives um interesting and, you know, another thing I wanted to comment here is that um, I guess this, I, I think this was probably minted on Manifold because I don't think you could do attributes on Foundation. Maybe you can I haven't used Foundation in a long time, but um, great attributes or we like to call them properties, whatever, artist name, addition, dimension, um, resolution. The only other thing I did in here is license. You already have it here, but it's always good to put it in the attributes because we're going to, I think in the future here, we're going to be a multi chain. I think those attributes will move multi chain. Um, outside of that, no, I think this is a great collection. I, I really like it. I, I saved it for last because I, like I, like, I like to end on something that I think is really well done. And um, yeah, that's what we have. Uh, that's, that's, that's all the collections we have for, uh, for this week. Um, looking forward to seeing um, more art and what we're, we're going to get for next week. Uh, as always, Steve, great to have you. Well, we had you one other time. It was really, really great. Same this time. Um, 
I, I, I definitely love when people have opposing opinions as, uh, from me and, and you have actually had an image grow on me during this session by speaking more about it and how did we see it from kind of your perspective, which is a, which is a great thing. It's, that's why I always love to have a co-host. It's, it's important to know that um, I am just one opinion. I am not the opinion. Um, Steve, Steve and I are just two opinions would not the opinion, but, but it's good to have um, more than a, more than only your eyes on your work. It's good to have uh, someone else's eyes on your work. Um, the second, the third, fourth, fifth person's eyes on your work. It's not a bad idea to create groups of uh, friends and collectors and run some images by them that you're in conflict with, that you don't know whether or not should belong in the collection or, or whatnot. And get a nice, get, get a per perspective from as many friends that you trust not the ones that are going to tell you that everything you do is great, but the ones that are going to tell you the uh, the truth to help you grow as, as an artist. So, yeah, I think with that, you know, great session. Like like I said, thanks for thanks for uh, taking the time out of your day, Steve, uh, to sure. be here. Really, thank you for inviting me, and thanks to everybody who came up and you know put their work up there. It's tough putting your work out there, and. Um, uh, but that's the only way that you grow and you can take or leave the um, comments, but just, you know, opening your mind to what other people think you might come back to where you are and say, no, everything is fine, but uh, it takes guts to do this. And I commend everybody who came up. Yep. Likewise. And thanks to Metal Jungle for giving us a platform for education. Thanks, um, thanks, Jaden, and thanks, Spoon, for uh, helping us run the Discord and all that you guys do for Mother Jungle. And with that, I don't know if there's any pullout for anything today. Yeah, I have one. Sweet. I'll put it in the chat. Cool, pull ups will go in the chat, guys. Um, you can just click on the pull app and it probably takes you to the website to claim that pull app, or I have on my phone poap.xyz. Um, and I just put in, you know, just click on the link and I put in my ENS spatial.eth and it goes right in there. Uh, if you guys are wondering what a poll app is, it's a proof of, um, proof of attendance participation, sort of like a little NFT for participating. It's a little reward and gift for, uh, for being here. Um, thanks for having you guys. Thanks Boone for uh, listening to poll apps and, um, I am out in uh, three, two, and one. Enjoy, Bye, everyone. Uh, enjoy your day, guys. Bye -bye. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.